Magic. Okay. Um, I'm going to tell you about our platform. Uh, the platform is uh, a research platform, although there are components that we're are, um, considering for development for business opportunities. Some of them are much further along than others. And what I'll try and do in, in the time that I have here is explain sort of the ground framework for the platform and then talk about the three um, avenues that we're pursuing um, in the, is in the business domain. Um, the platform itself, um, it's open source completely. Uh, we actually had a workshop here over the last two days where we trained a bunch of uh, uh, energetic young students to use the platform for their own purposes. Um, it's been developed over roughly 10 years as a research platform. We had funding from multiple um, governmental as well as foundation sources of around uh, $50 million to put the platform forward. Um, one of the challenges as well in terms of the commercialization and development of it is it's also a multinational platform. So to deal with the jurisdictions across uh, the pond in terms of putting together uh, term, uh, terms, term sheets and patent agreements and so on and so forth. Um, but the platform itself, if you do get a hold of it, you'll notice it's actually, I think, quite well formed. And part of the reason for that is we did partner with a company in Germany to develop a platform in terms of industry standards to make sure that it had a, a decent amount of uh, usability as well as curation of the software going forward. What you see in this slide is the, the workflow. And the notion of the virtual brain is to try and make use of existing data to create simulations of a brain. You can do this at the level of entire population, so you can mine large data sets, or you can do it on the level of individuals, and that's where the commercial opportunity comes in. Um, this one here just shows you, the, again, the workflow. You've got, uh, in the case of data that are existing, you can get MRI data from almost anybody now quite easily, um, both in terms of the person's own geometry, in terms of their connections in the brain, as well as in terms of the functions that are being uh, instantiated, and use that to form sort of the basis of a high-level model. So you can take their, again, geometry, you can estimate their structural connectivity, and then implement some maths to generate dynamics of local cell populations to generate functional data. You can stimulate the model itself as well, and then generate data that you use then to fit the computation model back to the empirical data. The notion there is you're trying to infer um, some of the dynamics at the level of the cell populations that produced the data that you uh, measured from the individual. So your inferences are based on the biophysical parameters that produce the data as opposed to the data themselves. So that um, capacity has led to um, at least three different um, avenues. So I mentioned we can do this on a level of populations. Again, the, the idea for the commercial developments is really to focus on the fact that we can personalize this. If we can do it across 500 individuals, we can do it across one individual as well. So the first um, application, which has probably been the most successful thus far, is for using it in the context of pre-surgical planning and epilepsy. That's being done in France, um, primarily driven by Victor Yersa in uh, Marseille. I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, the second application is to use it for prognosis and diagnosis in stroke and dementia. We have proof of principle for that. We're actually trying to build a business case for that through the Toronto chapter, which I'm involved with. And the last one um, is uh, brain health monitoring uh, using um, a similar sort of motivation that Graham talked about with the Muse platform uh, to use portable devices to help monitor uh, brain um, health and use it for entertainment platform. That's actually been driven by Petra Ritter, who's sitting in the back with her children right now. Hi, Petra. Okay. The epilepsy application, um, this again is the pipeline. Uh, this is being used, as I said, in a large clinical trial uh, nationally being conducted in France. The notion is to take the clinical data. In this particular case, you've got stereotaxic EEG data where you've got uh, needle electrodes and, that are implanted to measure the local field potentials from different parts of the brain. You also have the structural information that's then put into um, the virtual brain pipeline to construct their own avatar. Um, to uh, incorporate the functional measures that are from the SEG and to generate the, the model um, for, that, for that individual person. And the goal for the model is to help, uh, again, support clinical decisions in terms of where is the likely source of the epilepsy itself, where is the propagation zone, and use that to determine how you um, intervene with the patient. Do you excise the tissue? Do you stimulate the tissue to try and alleviate the seizure and so on? 
So from that, you get a fingerprint for the patient. You get sort of a virtual chart that then, that's then used to guide the intervention for the, for the patient. And that, again, is part of a clinical trial, so it's quite exciting um, in terms of the potential outcome uh, for the virtual brain. Um, so that ap application would be more s sort of uh, providing a solution that could be used then in the clinic. Um, and this is along the similar lines, using it for the, for the prognosis and diagnosis um, for different diseases. In this particular case, it's prognosis for recovery from stroke. Um, this is an example of a, a brain that's had a stroke. You can see the discoloration here, which is actually not supposed to be there. So if you have that in your brain, go see somebody. Um, you can take this brain, put it in again to the computational modeling framework and look at what the dynamics that are there that are generated by that particular individual and again make the inferences about the capacity of that person's brain to generate dynamics and see how that relates to their clinical uh, indications at that point in time. What we found was that um, across about 40 stroke subjects that the parameters that are estimated actually predicted how well they would recover to uh, rehab both initially as well as one year after rehab, so how well they res responded and saved the rehab outcomes. So obviously we're following that up to get more um, evidence that that's in fact a good prognosis for a therapeutic outcome. And there is an example uh, of a similar application to use to differentiate um, cognitive dysfunction um, going from healthy aging to MCI uh, to dementia um, using a very similar modeling platform. Uh, the publications listed at the bottom of the slide there. And the last um, application um, is called Brain Modes. Again, uh, Petra Ritter's been driving that one. And the notion there is, again, focusing on the fact that we can individualize um, the, the data um, and make customized models for individuals. So the idea there is to create your own virtual brain and use that to interface um, with, for example, the EG headset that uh, Graham was talking about or other similar platforms to drive the data into your model and use that for a neurofeedback platform using that for brain health, but also using that in the case of entertainment. So we can use it actually for a gaming platform as well. Um, this one's had some seed funding, is actually moving along at a slow pace, but it's actually moving uh, nevertheless. So all of these, these are examples of, of um, business forays, if you will, to try and um, help develop the virtual brain so it can be used for its uh, initial purpose to actually help diagnose in, uh, clinical conditions, but there's also other aspects which have come into play, like brain modes that weren't initially part of the plan, but sort of came about as we started talking with industry partners, started thinking about how can we use this application, talking to artists, for example, as well, and saying, how cool is this? Can you actually think about ways you can interface the graphics we get from the brain data themselves into something that's actually enticing for the user, and that's how we developed the brain modes um, application. So we're not even close yet to generating revenue. We're sort of pie in the sky, but it's, it's fun, but it takes a lot of time for sure. And there's always challenges along the way in terms of SMEs and so on, which you all quite well know. Um, so with that, I will um, just uh, acknowledge the main people on the project, just Petra in the back there, Victor in France, Anna Solotkin has been involved in the stroke uh, and dementia part, and me, who's the maestro, I guess, of the project, so thank you for that.